Hello and a very warm welcome to this 1.1-ness meditation session. My name is Els and I'm very happy to be with, he, with you here today. For those of you who are new, let me give you a little bit of a background to this project. These oneness sessions are organized by One Point Consulting, which is an IT consultancy company based in London. Several of us working for One Point Consulting have been meditating on a regular basis, some of us for many years now. The meditation we practice is called Raja Yoga. It's the yoga of the mind. My personal experience is that regular meditation is very helpful as we live in a very fast changing world and we sometimes have to, have to face major challenges in our lives. We had the thought that it might be good to share some of these meditation practices with a wider audience with the hope that others can also benefit from meditation. The Oneness Project was launched in May 2020, which was in the middle of COVID and pandemic, and a very difficult time for many people. So far, we have had more than 150 international guest speakers who have contributed to this project. These are experienced meditators from different cultural and professional backgrounds. The sessions are a half an hour, and they are um, a short talk about a particular topic, but also a short guided meditation. And all the sessions have been recorded, and they are available on YouTube. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Enrique Simo, who joins us from Spain. Enrique works as an executive coach and as a facilitator in leadership development programs, helping senior managers and their teams meet personal and professional goals. He is a member of the National Coordinating Team for the Teaching of Raja Yoga Meditation in Spain, and he also coordinates the headquarters in Madrid. Enrique has over 30 years of experience teaching meditation, personal development, and inner leadership. And he travels um, in Spain, I would also say globally, giving lectures and courses. Enrique is very committed to helping people find their ways in, or their way in life, to be able to live with peace and happiness, and thus make the world a better place for everyone. The topic for today is learn self-compassion. So Enrique, thank you very much for being with us today. And we're looking forward to the to the session with you. Thank you very much for the introduction, Els. And yes, I will share some of I, some ideas and some of my experiences about uh, self-compassion. And as you all know, we are living in a very complex world, I would say. And I'm working in the corporate world, and I'm working with managers and executives and people who are very busy and have to um, uh, face a lot of challenges. And what I observe is many of them, they, they have a need of recognition, a need of appreciation, a need of someone else saying that they are doing a good job because there are so much pressure and so much tension that sometimes we need someone else to, to give us some good feelings, some support, some uh, expression or feedback of, of our um, good work that we are doing. So this is why self-appreciation is very connected with self-compassion. Because usually what happens is that we treat ourselves very badly when we make a mistake or something doesn't go in the right way as we expected. So when, when you start to meditate or you, you start to observe yourself a little bit more deeper, you, you can realize that many of the thoughts take the form of a dialogue. And usually this dialogue, because of our culture, because of the influence of news and, and, and media and, and the conversations we have, we have with people, usually these internal dialogues are not very positive. Sometimes they take the form of a critic inside ourselves. Sometimes they take the form of a judge. Sometimes they take the form of, of a victim. 
And these internal dialogues in these ways, they don't give us happiness. Instead, they give us frustration, feeling of frustration, of uh, sometimes of uh, um, anxiety and so many things. And this is why, because we treat ourselves in a bad way, we need the appreciation, the recognition, or the support of someone externally to us. Sometimes we get it, sometimes not. So then it's double frustration, because if I don't treat myself in a good way, and others don't recognize or don't appreciate or don't say good things to me, then I feel really very, a little bit depressed and with low energy because I need something positive in my life. So finally, the, the way to, to change this situation is to, to develop this self-appreciation based on self-compassion. And in the same way that you help a colleague or a friend or a member of your family when they make a mistake or they do something wrong or something not expected and you treat them kindly, well, with sweet words, maybe you hug them, you smile them, you accompany, you give support. So in the same way, we have to learn the art of self-compassion, of becoming a friend of ourselves inside our head. Because I, as I said before, in fact, our experience in life happens inside our mind. We interpret, we read the situations externally in our minds and we create a story. And this story creates an experience, a feeling, a sensation inside myself. So I think that is the situation that creates this experience, but in fact, is my internal dialogue that creates this experience, not the situations, in fact. So when I learned the art of changing this internal dialogue and having a more compassionate attitude towards myself, then many things changed. Then I don't need so much the appreciation or recognition of others, but I'm able, as a good friend of mine, to talk to myself in a nice way, in a kind way, to have a more positive perspective of situations. And then there is a very beautiful interaction inside yourself. In fact, you are creating a very beautiful, I would say, harmoni harmoni harmonious, harmonious uh, relationship with yourself. So let's talk a little bit about compassion. What means compassion? It's um, it's the attitude of wishing something good for others, peace, happiness, and or the freedom of suffering. And it's not only to have these feelings, but also the intention to do something about it. It's not a feeling of pity. It's not a passive feeling. Compassion, in fact, is an active feeling. And the same happens with self-compassion. It's not a a feeling of having pity of yourself because this is like a victim attitude. No, it's to have these kind feelings towards yourself and to have an active internal dialogue as a friend, finding solution, maybe changing the perspective that you have from this situation, appreciating what you are doing, recognizing the effort that you are doing. So if you want to have a more fulfilling life, not only a job, but family, health, wealth, all aspects of your life. You need to change your, your thoughts. But in this case, it means you need to change your inner dialogue. And if you change that, it takes a while, but it's not difficult. It's not easy. <laughs> it's a question of practice. But you will be surprised how big is the impact of this change of this internal dialogue in your life, in all areas of your life. So how to start this process of changing this internal dialogue and be more self-compassionate with yourself? So first step, and is the basis of learning also to meditate and create an attitude of a more introspective meditative attitude, the first step is to pause, to stop. If we don't pause, don't stop, 
and continue to do actions, continue to work, continue to talk, continue to do things, we are not able to, to realize what is happening inside of ourselves. So we need to pause, to disconnect from what is happening outside and start to look inside ourselves. And this doesn't need to have a, to be a meditation, an official meditation. This can be by walking or you are um, maybe sitting in a, in a place or you can go to a park and just pause, disconnect from everything and connect with yourself. Now, in the world of today, you, 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 you may know also, because this is very event, evident, people are very distracted with media and with all these devices. So it seems like there is no time to stop and connect with yourself. When the people have time, they connect with their devices and then get distracted and get more outside of themselves. So first step is to stop and to pause, to find this time and to go inside and observe your inner world. This is the second step. Learn the art of observation. Become the detached observer. We don't learn this uh, attitude, or I would say this quality, or this ability to, of observing in the school, nor in the university, neither in, in the job, uh, in the workplace. So we need to practice this and to learn how to observe without judging, without criticizing, without comparing. So we need to train ourselves. It's like a muscle. How to train? Very easy. All the day you have opportunities. You don't, don't need time, extra time. Just to observe situations and describe them in your mind as they are, not adding anything else. Just one person is walking in the street. This mother is with a child and the child is crying. So you train yourself just to describe what is happening without adding any judgment, any, any opinion. And it's not normal because we are not used to this training. But the more you train yourself in this way, the more you are becoming the detached observer. Because when you describe situations, it's like you are putting yourself a little bit from a distance and then you have space to decide how to respond to this situation. So when you start to observe these things outside, then you develop also the art of observing inside yourself, which is the next step. So you observe what is happening inside and you can observe your feelings, how I feel, without judging, just describing the feelings, being there with the feelings. And you will see that when you are there with the feelings, the feelings comes down they, they, they lose a little bit their, their strength and they, you become more detached from them. But then you can also observe how is your body? And sometimes the body is in a position that creates tension. So when you are able to observe and you feel where is tension, you can reorganize your body. You can uh, reposition your, yourself physically. And then you can observe also your thoughts. So when you develop the art of observing, you you start to know yourself better in all ways, emotionally, physically also, you know, how is your posture and mentally, what are the kind of thoughts that you are in your mind, you have in your mind. And you will realize that mostly we have this kind of internal negative dialogues. So the next step is very important because when you realize that, you need to convince yourself that you need to change this relationship with yourself. And I say convince, because if you don't convince about the benefits, about what will you achieve, about uh, what will be the impact in your life, not only job, but also relationships, family, health, so many things, you need maybe to read something or to listen to some audios so that you, you, can, you can really realize and understand the benefits of changing this inner dialogue, then you will do the effort. Because you need to make an effort. The old dialogues are so ingrained that are difficult to change if you don't have um, a reason, a purpose, strong enough to make the effort and be consistent in the effort. Because you need consistency. For a while, this doesn't change one day from another. So when you have convinced yourself, then probably there is victory. They say, there is a saying in India, when you have courage, 
when you have determination, there is victory. So then you need to train your mind with understanding, with meditation. And I would say I, I, I made that write, <clears throat> write a new dialogue, a new positive dialogue, thinking that you are helping or talking to a friend who has made a mistake or has done something wrong. And you will see that it's very easy then to write a dialogue. What will you do with this friend? And then just apply the same dialogue to yourself. My experience is that I've done this for a long period of time now. And I can say very honestly that still I have many things to change, of course. This spiritual life journey is very fast, very, very long. But I would say that now inside myself, there is a friend. I can talk to my friends. My friend talked to me. It's someone who is helping me, supporting me, um, accompanying me. Um, it's like helping me to change the perspective of the situation. So it's really a big change in my life. Before it was not like that. But you need to train yourself. You need to write the new dialogue. You need to observe. You need to do all these things as a normal pattern of your life. To stop, to observe, to convince yourself, to change the dialogue. And then slowly, slowly, this internal positive dialogue will take a new form and you will create a new relationship with yourself. It's not difficult, I can tell you. It's only a question of practice. And it's not a question of practice one day, seven days, nothing, one day, three days, nothing, no. You need to change a pattern inside yourself. You need constant practice every day, a little bit. And you don't need time for that. It's a question of attention, internal attention. You can talk to yourself in a different way while you are going to your job. You can talk to yourself in a different way while we are taking the lift or while, you, or while you are going to the stairs. So there are many situations that you don't need to work. You don't need to think about anything else. And you can talk to yourself and train yourself to have this more positive uh, relationship with yourself. So now I would like to, to uh, do an exercise where I can uh, share with you the practice of these ideas, but in the form of uh, a meditation. And so that you can have the experience and to um, understand more what do you need to do. So, first of all, take, find a nice place where you can sit comfortably. And at the same time, to be alert. Meditation is to be attentive and to be alert. and leave your back as upright as possible. And you can leave your feet well supported on the floor and your hands resting comfortable. So that you can find this position of equilibrium and stability. The position helps you, physical position helps you to have a mental position. So now you can close your eyes if you prefer, or you can focus your eyes in a point so that you are not distracted by anything external. And be aware of this present moment as it is. And for that, observe your breathing. Be aware of the smooth and constant rhythm of your own breathing. And observe the feeling of expansion as you breathe in and of relaxation as you breathe out. And now regulate your breathing and find, in, find this natural breathe, letting it occur without any effort. Observe your thoughts as clouds in the sky. 
allow them to come and allow them to go. Learn the art to be the observer. This is a very useful skill for life, not only for meditation, for life. Be a little bit detached. Learn how to observe. So clean the sky of your mind and allow yourself to be relaxed and at ease with yourself and with the world. And now inhale deeply and imagine you are breathing in self-compassion. And exhale and release any feelings of self-judgment or criticism. Practice this. Inhale, self-compassion. Exhale, self-judgment. And you can maybe recognize the presence of these judgmental or critical thoughts. But don't fight with them. Don't suppress them. Just observe. Remember, the observer is a little bit detached, is not engaged. So you can observe without being influenced by that. But you recognize, you don't suppress. And you can see yourself criticizing yourself, talking in a bad way to yourself sometimes. And you are aware that these thoughts come to your mind. So now you are aware, you accept them, you recognize them. So now respond to these thoughts with a, a message of self-kindness. And you can say to yourself, well, I can see through my experience that every mistake I've made has made me more mature. I've become more expert in life and in relationships. Everything that has happened in a different way that I was expecting has helped me to grow, to learn, to develop my internal security. So now I realize that everything that has passed in, in the past has been for a reason and it has helped me to continue in my journey of life. These thoughts help you to start to be more compassionate with yourself. And now I invite you to create a positive vision of yourself. See yourself as a spiritual being, a conscious being, and to have a kind and caring and loving vision toward yourself. And you can repeat some thoughts like, I'm a loving person. I have love in my heart. There is goodness in my heart. There is peace in my head. I feel good with myself. I appreciate myself as I am. I recognize the goodness that lies inside myself. And usually, our internal dialogue, the negative one, has to do with mistakes from the past or things that I don't like how it happened or how I behave or what someone said to me. So now in meditation, allow yourself to be free from these things from the past. Allow the past to become the past, no matter what has happened. It has already passed. It doesn't exist. It only exists in your mind. 
So now be compassionate. Really compassionate with yourself. And forgive yourself. And forget the past. Let go of the past. Liberate yourself from the past. And connect with the present. The present is the moment of possibilities. The present is the moment of creation. So now, let go of the past and create the best thoughts, the best feelings for yourself. You deserve it. Yes, you deserve it. You are complete. You, are, you have many virtues, many specialities and qualities. All of us we have. So you have already. Accept as you are. Connect with your inner beauty. You are a beautiful being. Say to yourself, I am a beautiful being. I am a peaceful being. I am conscious of my beauty inside myself. Say to yourself, now I'm the creator of my story. I can create a new story from today. I can create a new dialogue with myself and this will create a new story. I deserve it. I let go of the past. I have compassion towards myself. I'm loving, I'm peaceful, I'm kind with myself, I'm worthy of receiving these feelings. I have become a friend of myself. So now you can give yourself these beautiful good wishes May I be kind to myself. May I accept myself as I am. May I become my best friend. May I live in happiness, in peace, in love. This is my real self. My real self. Just breathe these feelings. Observe the impact inside yourself. And now before finishing, I want to invite you to imagine that from up above, from beyond this world, it falls on your head a cascade of silvery light, very soft. A silvery light that reaches your head, penetrates throughout your body. That silver light is full of peaceful and serene energy. You can visualize how this silver light penetrates your head, filling your brain with calm and well-being. You can feel how your whole head is filled with this silver light and you feel very, very peaceful. And you realize that the cascade of light continues to fall on you and passes through your whole body. And you feel that you are surrounded by an aura of luminous and silver energy. You can see yourself wrapped in that energy of serenity, of calmness and tranquility. See how good you feel with these feelings inside yourself. And again, with this beautiful light surrounding you, 
Repeat inside yourself, may I be kind to myself. May I accept myself as I am. May I become my best friend. May I love myself as I am. And now, observe how you feel. And breathe deeply. And recall this experience in your heart so that you can repeat it again and again and practice again and again so that finally it becomes a habit, part of your nature. You don't need to meditate. You just have these thoughts inside yourself and you become your best friend. Thank you so much for listening with so much attention. Thank you, Enrique, uh, for sharing your thoughts on this topic and also the beautiful meditation commentary. It was very special. Um, and if I can summarize uh, what you shared is the feeling I have is that um, it's so important to change that judgmental attitude towards myself because sometimes we're very judgmental and we place it with self-compassion. But also when you talked about how everything that we have experienced in life, even the negative experiences, uh, have helped us on this journey in life. I think that's a very important understanding and to allow the past to be the past. So thank you so much for that, for being with us today, because I know we have a busy schedule. Um, thanks to the technical team and those who have joined us today. I hope you have enjoyed the session. And we're looking forward to welcoming you again at the next one point one this meditation session. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, Norike. -bye,